Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. We live in a time in which treason is being normalized. Sedition is being normalized. For those who don't know, sedition is when you talk about violently overthrowing the government. In the United States, we're so free. We can say more than in anywhere else in the world. There are really only two places in the US where free speech ends. One is sedition, and the other is giving away national security secrets. That's it. I mean, that's kind of incredible when you think about it. Because even other countries where, that we consider to be civilized, countries like Canada and the UK, you can't say these, the things that you can't hear. Over in Canada, you have to use the pronouns that a person wants you to use. In the UK, politics is very difficult to talk about without being accused of inciting racial hatred or, or some other ridiculous and just law. So, yeah, America is, is so incredibly free. The, the, the bar is so low. It's just, it's so easy to say whatever you need to say. But now, we see, kind of in, the, in this collective narrative, we see treason being normalized. And one of the best, I think, examples of this is a mainstream news anchor who recently talked about taking it to the streets and called for a revolution. It's important because this isn't just some random idiot on the internet. This is, well, like I said, it's, it's a mainstream news anchor from MSNBC, Donny Deutsch. And I want to show you this clip. Here we go. People need to start taking to the streets. This is a dictator. This is not something to analyze anymore. Yeah. This is not so, oh, a good day for Trump. Yeah. Yeah. This is frightening stuff if you are an American. If you're, if you're somebody who's 80 years old and sitting at home and you've watched the greatness of this country, you should be terrified. And if you're a 12-year-old and the future is in front of you, this is terrifying. This is not time to analyze and pundit. People, this is a, we need a revolution at this point. And I'm not doing TV here, and I'm not going, ooh, no, crazy no. dog. Well, well, this is what's going on. You, you know. So there it is. Mainstream TV. This isn't some backroom bar in which he's drunk and going on a tirade. This is something that he thought he should mention to the world, that he could do so freely without any potential retribution, should we say. But it's not just him. This kind of actions, or words, are being spread across the spectrum, like, take Antifa, and look at what they've done. For six months, they operated, and they were beating people up, they were shutting down conservative speakers, they were attacking police officers, burning cop cars. They were a domestic terrorist organization. There's just no other way to put it. But nobody labeled them as such for at least six months. Obama, his, his whole administration, never labeled Antifa as a terrorist organization. It took Donald Trump to come into office and, assumably, to tell the Department of Homeland Security to do something, to label them accurately. I, I can't even imagine going on these violent sprees for six months whilst nobody even pays attention. But that happened. And then you have the colleges. Anyone who's been to college, especially a liberal arts college, should be aware that professors tend to be on the far left. Pretty over the top, in fact. But now it's, now it's, even, it's even worse, because they're more emboldened. I've got a clip from a guy named Albert Ponce, who is a professor at Diablo Valley College. And he is being seditious. He is talking about well, what happens if democracy is not enough? It is telling his students that essentially um, overthrowing the government or changing the government through uh, the democratic process is not enough. So go ahead and watch this. That happens through lawmaking, and that's the beauty of the law. If you can write it, you can convince all others to follow it, just like all of us do today, when we shouldn't. Many of the laws existing, we should be violating those laws. But all men are created equal, and we're taught to recite that as we enter kindergarten. Right? Mm -hmm. We're taught to get up 
and pledge allegiance to the flag every single day, a flag that's not really representative of everybody who's standing up in that room. Maybe that's the way it should be taught. All those who this flag represents stand up. And all, and maybe 50% of this room, you stay sitting down because this is not for you. That's factually accurate. And then enough people do that. None of the above. And move to the streets. When people move to the streets, that's the only time things have had changed in, in our history. And that's empirically verifiable. Politicians do not wake up one morning and say, oh, the men, oh, I woke up today, I think I'll give women the vote. No. Frederick Douglass, power concedes nothing, never has, never will. Axiomatic. Right? So we have to struggle for it. But we do it in the work we're already doing. Many of us in this room are already committed to that struggle. Right? Now it's important that we name people like Albert Pons because I think it's important to name and shame them. There's this uh, thing that we have now in the modern era where nobody wants to actually point and say this person is a bad person. I think that's part of the problem. We ought to be willing to, to name people and shame them. And frankly, it ought to be really hard for Albert to get a job at a decent company after he leaves the, the college system. Because sedition is, is, is criminal, but it's also disgusting. I mean, if, even if sedition were, were completely legal, it would still be wrong. And this is happening in colleges throughout the country. I mean, you don't have many instances in which there's a young man who is apparently being taught and who is willing to hold up his, his phone in front of this professor and film this professor's tirade and then put it on the internet because that's not really the way to get a passing grade. So there's a lot of incentives to not do that. So you can read about cases where it's happening, but it's rare to actually catch it on video. But the point is that there is a, a mentality now where it's okay to say these things, and that wasn't the case in the past. Another example was when an envelope filled with, a, at the time, mysterious white powder was sent to the household of Donald Trump Jr. That's, you know, Donald Trump's eldest son, and it was opened by his wife, Vanessa. She was rushed to the hospital, and at the time, nobody knew what the white powder was or if she was going to be okay. But on the internet, we saw lots of people, including some pretty big figures, talking about how it was deserved or how it's a good thing, how they hope it affects the president negatively. In fact, you had the Socialist Workers' Party saying, disgusting things happen to disgusting people. I mean, they're disgusting. <laughs> but this is the, the normalization of treason. I can't imagine in any past presidency, I mean, whether the president was left or right, having the the opposite political party who, you know, among the regular public, being willing to, to talk about how wonderful it was that a person's life was in danger. Then you look over the recent Olympics, the Winter Olympics that took place in South Korea, where the media decided to talk about how wonderful the North Koreans were, and the Chinese too, I believe. You see, they don't have a problem with tyranny, they don't have a problem with dictatorships, regardless of how much they claim, you know, Donald Trump is the new Hitler and he's a tyrant and he's evil, regardless of all of that, they don't have a problem with tyranny. They're just like their kind of tyranny. They're like communistic tyranny. They have a problem with a Christian capitalist. And that's really the narrative that they're building. Because when you look at, say, a North Korean team of cheerleaders who are acting in unison like a, a bunch of clones, who will probably be killed if they do something wrong, and everybody with any intellectual honesty knows this. You can't look at that and glorify that. And how heartless is that that the people who died inside of North Korea, inside of the most totalitarian regime of our time? But the media doesn't care. They're talking about how Donald Trump is the type. The point is that there's something that kind of underbellows all of this, that this normalization of treason and seditious talk, uh, and so on. And it ties in with a shadow government, or call it a deep state, or, or a swamp. It's all different terms that we've coined to describe really the same thing. And it works in tandem with the media. Of late, there have been several news articles in which it's been described that 
the president shouldn't go up against the FBI. I believe I saw one headline that said, president, Mr. President, if you go up against the FBI, you will lose. And it cited several anonymous sources from within the FBI. This is admission that there is a shadow government. It's a, a direct, plain as day admission. But no one's talking about the, the, the shadow government or the deep state, at least the sources that ought to be talking about it aren't. And the truth is, it's actually part of it, because, again, the media works in tandem with it. The FBI is supposed to work for the president. Clearly, they don't. Now, this shadow government, it has its own ideology that has been persistent through several different administrations. Now, Bill Clinton, he, he pruned it. But I don't want to say that he cleaned it, because he didn't. He didn't really institute better people. He wasn't draining the swamp. He was, he was just making it more like him. And he... I can't think of a politician who more kind of embodies corruption uh, than the Clinton family. And Bill, Bill Clinton especially. So, yeah, he pruned it, but it's there with its own, its own ideology. And one example of this is take the Bush administration. I'm not a fan of Bush, but Bush was, you know, he, he presented himself as a Republican, and most people who voted for him were conservative. Now, during his administration, it came out from internal documents that during that time, the government was looking for domestic terrorists. And they weren't looking for radical Muslims and stuff like this, no. They were looking for people who were pro-constitution. They were looking for people who were patriotic, and I believe the third criteria was if they were Christian. That doesn't fit with a conservative president. But it fits with, say, an Obama-era president. You see, it's consistent throughout all these different... Um, White House leaderships, you know, through these different administrations. Now, Obama, he used the IRS to shut down the Tea Party. I mean, for all intents and purposes, he shut down the Tea Party. You know, he, the IRS denied 501c3 uh, statuses, that's like the charity status, to organizations that did fit the definition of a charity, and they audited these groups so that they really couldn't function. Because when you go into an audit, especially if you're a big company or a big organization, it takes an incredible amount of, of money and effort just to deal with an audit and get them to deal with you fairly. So now Obama himself shouldn't have been able to do this. I mean, it certainly is not within his, his legal authority. And so it required this kind of evil deep state, this underbelly deep state, to make this possible. Now, there have been various excuses. During the Bush administration, there was talk about, well, the, the Branch Davidians, you know, the Waco event, and that's why we should be looking closely at these Christians. Nowadays, it's either the neo-Nazis, which are supposedly everywhere, or the Russians. You know, there's always some boogeyman somewhere um, to justify it. But regardless, there is this deep state. And why this is important is because just recently, the deep state just moved against Donald Trump in a big way, and I think a lot of people have missed it. When he was running in 2016, throughout the entire election cycle, one poll after another said that the most important thing for Americans was the economy, or more generically, was jobs, job availability. That was more important than healthcare and immigration, which were two really hot topics, really important topics. Now, since being elected, his economy has been fabulous. You know, the, the left won't talk about it, the media won't talk about it, because it's that good. Now, if there's anything they could say negative, they'd be on it. Um, but up until very recently, it's been fantastic. And now, the, the stock market is well, going down at the moment. And the reason for this is because of the Federal Reserve. Now, the Federal Reserve is part of this, this deep state... Um, kind of disgusting group. Now, it is officially a, a private company. I don't know if anybody, if most people know that. It's called the Federal Reserve. So everyone thinks that it's a, a federal agency. It's not. But it does have strong ties to, um, to this leftist 
um, dark Clintonish uh, shadow government. Okay, so under Trump in the past slightly over a year, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates four times. Each time it causes the stock market to kind of quiver for investors to get nervous. Four times in a little over a year, that's massive. For perspective, during Obama's eight year tenure, uh, whatever you want to call that, during his reign, the, the Federal Reserve increased interest rates only twice. It decreased them a bunch of times, but it only increased them twice because that causes the economy, causes the stock market uh, to go down. So here the, the, the deep state actually has a method through which they can fight back against Trump in the area that is of most importance to Americans, and that is the economy. It has been. So in the past, you know, when I was talking about, you know, the Bush era and the Obama era, this, this deep state has actually been working against Americans. You know, when you, whether it was against the Tea Party, which, which was a bunch of Americans, um, or whether it was against Christians. You know, in both cases, they're actually targeting regular people. In this case, the deep state is actually fighting against the president himself, and that's why this is unprecedented. Um, and one of the ways in which he can't fight back very well is through this use of interest rates, because like I said, he doesn't have real authority over the Federal Reserve, since it is officially a private corporation. So, so I think it's important everyone's aware that this is going on, because otherwise, uh, well, what they're trying to present is well, he, he can't keep the economy going, because you know, he claimed that he could, and he has been able to, but they're trying to undermine that. So, uh, give that some thought, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. I should be producing these on a regular basis. I appreciate it. Health-wise. <laughs>